welcome it is 7 30 in the evening in india and we are back again with a spotlight on g20 we are seeing the power of leveraging digital public infrastructure for financial inclusion in india in fact financial inclusion is a powerful tool for development and the big picture is that 71 percent of adults in developing economies now have a formal financial account a decade ago it was just 42 percent after rural households in Uganda started using mobile money accounts, their food security increased by 45%. But challenges remain, considering that 1.4 billion people around the world are still unbanked. How can India advance financial inclusion to the unbanked as G20 president? We will focus on that today. I'm Amun Bhattacharya. Let's get started with the top stories. <laughs> First meeting of G20, Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion concludes in Kolkata. Deliberations on the third and final day focus on finance for small and medium-sized enterprises, building pathways for financial inclusion and streamlining GPFI processes. Economic advisor in India's finance ministry, Chanchal Sarkar, outlines a digital financial infrastructure and making finance easily accessible to small and medium enterprises as the existing priorities of G20 Financial Inclusion Action Plan, says discussions started in Kolkata on the Financial Inclusion Plan for 2024 to 2026 period. India says majority of G20 delegates agree that leveraging digital uh, public infrastructure is the best way to advance financial inclusion to the vulnerable sections of society. The United Nations based Better Than Cash Alliance lords India's uh, progress and driving uh, Inclusive finance for its citizens, said the spread of bank accounts and Aadhaar, said the foundation for innovators to provide financial services to Indian citizens. Financing micro, small and medium enterprises and initiating work on financial inclusion action plan for 2023 were at the center of the third and final day of the Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion Working Group meeting in Kolkata. Participants lauded India's progress in creating digital public goods and their usage in the public delivery system. DD India's correspondent Ajay Mishra brings us this report from Kolkata. Out of every five formal MSMEs in developing countries are either neglected or unserved by banking firms, causing a total credit gap of almost 5 trillion US dollars. That is 1.3 times the level of MSME lending currently in place. The G20 Working Group on Financial Inclusion on its third and final day discussed ways to promote technology that can help bridge the digital divide facing the MSMEs. Participants lauded India's impressive performance on this front and expressed hope that the world can learn a lot from the Indian experience. The G20 Presidency of India has just begun, so it is early on, but, but the first experience that we have here as a working group with the G20 is uh, the usual for me, but overwhelming for my colleagues' hospitality that India and also the state of West Bengal is actually giving us here. The welcome is magnificent, the organization is great, and I think that bodes very well for the G20 Presidency in general. Indian G20 presidency uh, just started and it's already very impressive the work that has been achieved by the member states uh, and I would like to commend the government of India and also as we're concerned here today the government of West Bengal for their hospitality, the perfect organization. Uh, it is a testimony of the importance that uh, the authorities in India uh, give to the very crucial topics that are dealt with um, in this uh, forum. Besides discussions on financial inclusion, India's G20 presidency is also providing the Indian tea industry opportunities to go global. Tea has got us all the 
top producers from the industry where we are showcasing the best of Indian teas, be it the Darjeeling's, the Nilgiri's. So we represent the startup part of uh, the tea industry. We've got producer partners with us and uh, exposure to all the delegates of G20. It's been a wonderful experience because this platform will give us a lot of exposure, much needed exposure, especially to Darjeeling. It's a very nice experience here uh, to showcase our teas. We are producers. We have um, a rich legacy of 140 years and we own 27 estates and to be able to um, you know showcase our teas here and uh, let the delegates know about our teas and the Indian teas, the black teas, the white teas it's an uh, enriching experience. India tea is not famous uh, in the last 10 uh, in one decade or two decades it's been there for almost 200 years so the delegates who have come from overseas, they were looking for Indian teas and we had a massive uh, sales yesterday and today the day has just begun and people are looking for Darjeeling black tea, Darjeeling green tea, Assam black tea. So that is what Indian tea is all about. We don't have to promote it anymore. People are coming. There is a demand already for it. Between 2011 and 2017, the Global Findex estimates that 1.2 billion additional customers got access to formal financial services thanks to fintech. The rapid growth of digital credit have provided an opportunity to reach underserved people and MSMEs. But as per the World Bank, 1.4 billion people are still unbanked. Chanchal Sarkar Economic advisor in India's finance ministry said that majority of G20 delegates agree that leveraging digital public infrastructure is the best way to advance financial inclusion to the vulnerable sections of society. Outlining the priorities of the ongoing G20 Financial Inclusion Action Plan, he said that discussion started in Kolkata on the Financial Inclusion Action Plan for the 2024 to 2026 period. Financial Inclusion Action Plan or FIA is a, a three years document and that continues to be the guiding principles for advancing or managing the, the GPFI's work. The current FIA is still on and is going to be uh, end in 2023 and there is a responsibility that these years happens to be the year when new uh, uh, Financial uh, Inclusion Action Plan or FIA for 2024 20, to 26 uh, uh, need to be prepared and for which initial uh, discussions have uh, st started uh, about the process. So uh, now, now onwards it will start. That process uh, is just uh, has initiated uh, and then it is the members, uh, uh, they will decide uh, what uh, would be the the finally, the, the, the priorities, but one thing I can tell you that uh, the existing uh, priorities of the exist, uh, this ongoing FIAP is that two, the major priorities. One is the digital financial inclusion and second is making uh, finances more easy, accessible to SMEs. These are, these are the two major uh, uh, priorities and overarching priorities are like uh, women and uh, vulnerable sections and the consumer protections in addition to this. These are the priorities. The third and final day of uh, Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion is focusing on MSME Finance. It is also an opportunity for India to showcase the success of Mudra Yojana focusing on MSMEs, the success of Vandhan Yojana focusing on welfare of tribal department the focus on Stand Up India which is uh, for the benefit of uh, SCST community and women beneficiaries. During the 2023, the Financial Inclusion Action Plan is also being discussed where the terms of references will be finalized by the Working Group on Financial Inclusion. With camera person Kuldeep Sharma, Ajay Mishra, DD India, Kolkata. The first meeting of the G20 Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion concluded in Kolkata after three days. Here's all the action that unfolded over the three days. Three days of intense deliberations in Kolkata on ways to advance financial inclusion in G20 countries drew to a close on Wednesday. 
The first meeting of the Global Partnership for Financial Inclusion started on Monday with a symposium on unlocking the potentials of digital public infrastructure for advancing financial inclusion and productivity gains. GPFI over the years during various presidencies has developed pathways to further digital financial inclusion targeting vulnerable segments such as SMEs, women, youth, informal sector, etc., which are instrumental in shaping transformational initiatives across countries on all the three dimensions, access, usage, and quality of financial inclusion. During our presidency, we'll continue to focus towards furthering the cause of technology-led financial inclusion. During the symposium, a special message was read out by Queen Maxima of Netherlands, highlighting achievements of India's digital stack. Greater connectivity and digital IDs allow access to financial services for millions previously left behind. Fair competition and interoperable payment systems help markets work better for even the smallest scale customers. Cybersecurity, customer protection, data governance, and digital literacy help marginalized communities navigate these services in ways that work for them. The G20 delegates visited an exhibition on digital innovations for financial inclusion, showcasing India's homegrown technologies, achievements and efforts in advancing digital financial inclusion. In the evening, the delegates were given a grand reception at a cruise on the Ganga River. It's absolutely wonderful. The hospitality and the culture and the kindness of the people is really overwhelming. Um, we've been taken on a tour to the Victoria Monument and the Indian Museum with a very good explanation and uh, very important to know about the local history, about the importance of Calcutta for the independence of India, so that is something that I've learned. The second day saw deliberations on leveraging digital public infrastructure for financial inclusion and productivity gains. With about 31% of the world's population largely women, poor and less educated adults still excluded from the formal financial system and many G20 developing countries facing challenges of opening bank accounts and providing a system for smooth digital payments. The G20 working group also discussed ways to reduce cost of remittances to 3% from the current global average of more than 6%. A seminar on financial literacy was also organized in which around 1,800 school students participated to enhance their understanding of banking, digital payments, insurance, investment, fraud protection and grievance redressal. I have learned from this program is managing my finances, everything about debit and credit, a lot about how to sustainably manage your money and uh, how to increase the inflation rate that is increasing day by day. So uh, a, a small, if you take everything into a summary, the one of the most important thing that I have learned is if I learn to manage my own finances, I will be more independent tomorrow because I know how to manage my money, how to use it for a good cause. How to manage the financial income of our life and how there are many, how many type of bank and banking system they have explained in a good way and how to use the money in a proper and how to save the money for our future and even for our use. This all thing I learned. The third and final day of the deliberations in Kolkata focused on MSME finance and discussed terms of reference for the Financial Inclusion Action Plan for 2023 with inputs from Ajay Mishra in Kolkata, Bureau Report, DD India. Based at the United Nations, so the Better Than Cash Alliance is a partnership of governments, companies and international organizations that accelerates the transition from cash to responsible digital payments to help achieve the sustainable development goals. DD India correspondent Ajay Mishra caught up with its Deputy Managing Director on India's G20 Presidency. Listen in. Cash uh, Alliance, uh, which takes care of uh, you know promoting financial inclusion and go cashless, uh, and uh, India uh, has done really uh, remarkable in that field. We have Mr. Tidhar Wall uh, to talk to us exclusively on DD India. Thanks very much, sir. Uh, what are the experience uh, uh, from the Indian cashless system that uh, we have created? How has been the experience so far during this G20 working group meeting? 
So India has made incredible progress in the last few years in driving inclusive finance for everyday citizens. First of all, uh, Adhar, the universal ID, India has provided 99% of its population with digital IDs. That builds the infrastructure for providing people with inclusive financial uh, accounts. And so in addition, building on that layer, there have also been uh, almost 500 million bank accounts opened in less than eight years. And so between the bank accounts, and the digital ID, that has set the foundations for innovators to come and provide financial services for everyday Indians. But when it comes to financial inclusion, there is a lot, lot more to be done at the G20 level. There are so many developing nations which don't have the solutions like uh, we have in India. So what are the lessons that the world can learn from Indian experience and where do you see this uh, G20 presidency going forward? So the, the beauty of the G20, it's a form of cooperation where the majority of world economies come together. And so that's a great platform for countries to learn from each other. And India has a lot to share, uh, but other countries can also share from their learning. And as the slogan says, this is, you know, we're one earth, one family, one future. And if we work together to share what has worked and what hasn't worked, then we can be uh, making progress on that agenda of inclusive finance. So there we heard uh, from the Better Than Cash Alliance uh, loading India's progress as far as financial inclusion is concerned. He said that 99% of Indians have got digital identity, that is Aadhaar. And besides that, uh, there are uh, so many Indians that have got uh, bank accounts in the matter of the last eight years. He said 500 million Indians got bank accounts. And on the basis of Aadhaar, as well as uh, so many bank accounts, India got a foundation for inclusive finance. So let's get to perspective now from our expert uh, joining us is Chanchal C. Sarkar. He is economic advisor in the Ministry of Finance of the Government of India. Mr. Sarkar, such a pleasure to have you joining us from Kolkata. You've been chairing the discussions over three days of GPFI in the city of Joy. Your thoughts on the major takeaways of the three days? Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, indeed, uh, this uh, three days have been engaging uh, there has been uh, uh, one very uh, uh, successful exhibition on product, uh, uh, digital financial products, innovative products, and fintech companies have come up and put up stalls and showcasing India's success in digital identity, UPI, and how the progress uh, are being made. That is one. That there has been a, a financial literacy seminar where. Almost 2,000 students were taught about various uh, digital banking, uh, other products like uh, credit, insurance, then risks and cyber issues and how to deal with that. That was uh, the, 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 the side event. And the main event was there at, for 10 and 11, uh, dis discussing the, uh, the unlocking and the advancing financial uh, inclusion through digital public infrastructure, then progress made so far, then reducing the uh, uh, remittance cost, and also uh, uh, having the SME finance, uh, how to make easier finance for SMEs. These are the major uh, takeaway from this three days uh, event here in uh, Kolkata, the first TPFI meeting uh, held here. Right, so, so you've uh, spelt out the major takeaways uh, from the three days in Kolkata. But I heard you say in the press conference that uh, majority of the opinion was that India's model of uh, leveraging digital public infrastructure for financial inclusion is the best uh, compared to other models, including physically going to uh, various bank branches to open bank accounts. Can you tell us about uh, what that majority view is in greater detail? Why do they think that this is the best model? Because various countries have used different models for financial inclusion. India has successfully used digital uh, public uh, infrastructure model. So uh, what are uh, the merits of this particular model that the G20 delegates talked about? And would they like to incorporate this in their systems as well? Well, uh, uh, that was the purpose of having this symposium on uh, unlocking the potentials of digital uh, public infrastructure for financial inclusion. In fact, there has been a broad consensus that the, the using the digital public infrastructures for scaling up the financial uh, inclusion, those who are left over, uh, left out, 
like uh, as per the world bank 1.4 billion people are still to be covered uh, brought under the uh, banking system but what is uh, most of the speakers talked about india's uh, uh, india's stack which is digital identity uh, then uh, uh, upi payments and then account aggregator these three things are, uh, are working simultaneously most of the countries Uh, have the uh, identities in some form or the, uh, or the other and payments but not uh, uh, like digital identity then payment system and account account aggregator working three together and uh, uh, these are tested and scaled uh, and and very very efficiently working everybody did talk about that hmm. and you also uh, spoke about uh, the priorities of the current uh, action plan on financial inclusion and you said the work has started for the next action plan and that uh, in, includes the period from 2024 to 2026 you said the two priorities are digital uh, infrastructure and also reaching out to the weaker sections or vulnerable sections including the msmes or msme finance is uh, the second priority we are aware the kind of uh, employment generation potential that this particular sector has and india has reached out to them through the stand up india scheme through the mudra scheme so what are the gaps that currently exist within g20 as far as uh, as msme finance is concerned and how can india help in that regard well uh, as you know the g20 is uh, is, is a, um, 20 countries including the eu and uh, they are diverse so they were they are not homogeneous so they they are a diverse country with degree of homogeneity is very very wide so therefore like there are rich country there are emerging countries uh, so the gaps uh, in 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 some uh, in developing countries and developed countries are not uh, different while uh, most of the uh, unbanked people uh, are found to be in 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 developing world or least developed world Uh, and the the infrastructure is less in 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 developing countries and it has been found that the the transaction cost high transaction cost cost and taking uh, i mean connectivity and infrastructure less but if the uh, india's uh, uh, model is is looked at then uh, this uh, bringing new technology innovative technologies that can Uh, uh, break the barriers and can give access uh, to 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 the finances uh, to, to for SMEs uh, like uh, new technologies and UPI based uh, payments, which is uh, cost free or minimalistic. I mean, I would government has made it uh, cost free, and uh, then uh, uh, you know technical uh, knowledge and uh, you know providing technical know how. Uh, to the other uh, uh, you know s- the countries there could be a, a possibility uh, that way india's model can can uh, perhaps help them how much emphasis is india giving to financial literacy a seminar like you said was organized around 1800 students attended it there is also a national strategy for uh, financial education 2020 to 2025 which has been put in place so in that context how much importance is india given to this and how critical is this in view of consumer protection uh, yes uh, you know that is is a part of this uh, gpfi and uh, global partnership for financial inclusion under g20 uh, uh, the members have Uh, undertaken uh, commitments to take forward the financial inclusion issues including the uh, uh, the uh, the consumer protection uh, issues so therefore like since uh, india is also party to it and india puts lot of emphasis on on need and and one of the reason why that uh, we organize this uh, financial literacy program uh, because uh, these these are uh, integral part of having effective Uh, financial inclusion so uh, and also the new challenges would need to be uh, dealt uh, in the financial uh, field also absolutely we we'll leave it at that mr sarkar thank you so much for joining us from kolkata and sharing your perspective on the 3 day gpfi meeting on financial inclusion and that's all that we have for you in this edition of india g20 we we'll leave you with visuals of a splendid uh, light and sound show organized at the victoria memorial in kolkata the city of joy for g20 delegates take a look namaskar
my conviction that this shall bear fruit and we shall reap the reward of a free country very soon. Subhash was a young man, full of new thoughts and ideas for the India he dreamt of. He wondered how India would surge ahead and make economic progress. How would India march shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the world? Sadly, even among his own people, Subhash started being looked at with suspicion. When he was chosen as the Congress Party chief for the second term, several party members tendered their resignations. Gandhiji was also upset that Sita Ramaya did not win the election.